Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson, we're going to be going through quantitative aspects of chemical change. So let's get started straight away. Um, we already had spoken quite a bit about quantitative aspects of chemical change in our last lesson. So we're going to move on to the next bit, which is about titrations and solving titration problems. And then what we are going to do is we're going to be um, going through a whole bunch of different examples, then stoichiometric calculations, and then we'll go through some exam, exam paper questions. Okay. So this is the one of the formulas that you can use. Um, the formula that you actually get given on your formula sheet says um, CAVA over NA is equal to CBVB over NB. So it's exactly the same as this, except there's an N in front of this. And what the N stands for is the number of moles. And all they've done is that, and I'll talk to you about the titrations and what they are in a second, you should know this already, is that all that they have done is they've used your concentration formula. We know that concentration equals number of moles over volume, okay, because it's measured in moles per decimeter cubed. So it's concentration is number of moles over volume. So what they've done is they've said, okay, fine. We can say that there is a ratio of the number of moles of acid to the number of moles of base, okay? Which means that we can say that CAVA over NA equals CBVB over NB. So if all they've done is rearrange this. That's all they've done. So it says a titration is a technique for determining the concentration of an unknown solution. And what is a titration? Basically what they do is they take a burette stand and they take a burette, which is a long, thin measured tube. Okay, and they have here yeah, an Erlenmeyer flask. Yes, I know I'll never get a Nobel Prize for my art. Okay, and what they do is in this container is a liquid with a known concentration, a known concentration. It also has an indicator in it. And what they do is that they use this, which they then add to this, and they measure the volume. Okay, and they might have an unknown concentration, unknown concentration, yeah. So what they'll have is on this side, on the bottom, for example, if this was the acid, let's pretend that this is the acid and this is the base, then for the acid, they'll know the concentration, they'll know the volume, and then we'll know, we'll know the number of moles because we have measured it, okay? Yeah, and it's also from the formula. Yeah, we will know the volume that we added to cause the indicator to change color. We will know the number of moles in the mole ratio from the formula. So therefore we can use the, determine the concentration of the base. So that is what's happening in a titration. So let's go through an example because usually going through examples really helps us work out what's going on. Okay, so it says given the equation NaOH, which is aqueous, and hydrochloric acid, which is aqueous, we end up with sodium chloride, aqueous, and water. Okay, so let's rewrite it. We've got NaOH plus HCl gives us NaCl plus water. They tell us that we've got 25 cubic centimeters 25 cubic centimeters of hydrochloric acid and it's the concentration of the hydrochloric acid was 0 0,2 moles. Okay, was prepared into a conical flask and titrated against the sodium hydroxide. It was, whoopsie, it was found that 15 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide was needed to neutralize the acid. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide. 
So they want this concentration of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so I'm going to first thing we need to do is make sure this equation is balanced. Just because they gave it to us doesn't mean it's balanced. We've got one sodium here, we've got one sodium there, well, one oxygen here, one oxygen, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, and one chlorine, one chlorine. So it is balanced. Okay, so the way we would normally do this, okay, I'll show you the long way, and then I'll show you the short way so you can understand the short way, okay? Normally what we would do is we would use this information here and we'd work out the number of moles. Because we know that num concentration is equal to number of moles over volume. So therefore we get to the number of moles is concentration times volume, right? So that would be, well, first of all, we need to change this 25 cubic centimeters into decimeters cubed, do you agree? Because remember, concentration is moles per decimeter cubed. So to do that, we need to divide by a thousand, so that just becomes 0, 0,25. So our concentration is 0, 0,2 multiplied by the volume of 0, 0,25. And we go pressing the buttons and we go O and we go 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.25 and that is going to give us 0, 0, 0.05. So that's 0, 0, 0.05 moles, 0, 0, 0.05 moles. Okay, then what we do is we look at the mole ratio and we see that one mole of hydrochloric acid reacts with one mole of sodium hydroxide, right? Therefore, if we have a ratio of one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of HCl, that means that if we've got 0, 0, 0,05 moles of hydrochloric acid, we are going to need 0, 0, 0,05 moles of sodium hydroxide, right? Right. And then again, we use this formula, okay? But this time we're working out the concentration. So concentration is number of moles over volume. The number of moles is 0, 0, 0,05 over the volume. Remember, this has to be changed to decimeter cubed. So that's going to be 0, 0,15 to decimeter cubed. So what are we going to do? We're going to pop that in our calculator and go 0, 0, 0,05 divided by 0, 0.15 equals 0, 0,33. So that's 0, 0,33 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, happy with that. Right, so now let me show you what we mean when we use this formula. So this formula goes CAVA over NA equals CBVB over NB, right? So it is CAVA over NA is equal to CB, sorry, CB, I'm going to get there, VB over NB. Okay, so these are the ratios of the moles, which you agree is one to one. So do you agree we can kind of ignore that, okay? Because that's one in this case and that's one, right? And then all we do is work it out. So we've got the concentration of the acid, we don't know. The volume of the acid in this case is 15 cubic centimeters, which again, just for practice, I'm gonna change to 0, 0,15, is equal to the concentration of the base, which is, sorry, I'm getting confused. This is not concentration, that is the volume. It's still 0, 0,15, but I shouldn't have square brackets around it. So it should just be round brackets, round. Okay, then the concentration is 0, 0,2 multiplied by 0, 0,25, because that is the volume, right? Therefore, CA is going to be 0, 0,2 multiplied by 0, 0,25, all over 0, 0,15. Okay, so if I do that, I go 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.15 equals, and we get the same answer of 0 0.333. So do you see that it makes no difference which way we did it, okay? 
for the simple reason it didn't matter that these if these mole ratios were different we would just fill them in okay if this was a two and that's a one you would fill it in okay because what we're doing is the same thing yeah 0.2 times 0.25 there's that 0.2 times 0.25 and then we found that that was 0.05 right 0.2 times 0.25 is 0.05 then what did we do we took that 0.5 and we divided it by 0.15. But look here, that's what we're doing here. We're taking 0.2 times 0.25, which is that, and we're dividing it by 0.15. They see they're the same thing. Look, same thing. So effectively, this is a shortcut for the two-step process that I did here. Okay, so don't feel like you're cheating by doing this. This is good. This is e makes it nice and easy for us. And on top of it, it's on the formula sheet, which makes it very easy for us. Okay, so make sure you know how to use this. Okay, right. Now let's talk about stoichiometric calculations. You're in grade 11, so you should know most of this already. In fact, you should know all of this, okay? And what the stoichiometric calculations basically say is whatever you do, you always need to change things into moles. We always relate things to moles. And what's also important is that we relate reactants and product moles with, with a balanced equation. So in other words, if we've got the mass of something, we use the formula number of moles is mass of a molar mass to get the reactant moles. If we're given the concentration of something, we use the formula concentration is number of moles over volume to find the moles. If we're given the volume of a gas, we know that molar volume of a gas is 22.4 decimeters cubed, so therefore we can find the number of moles. Right, you understand that. Similarly, once we've got the product moles, if they, sorry, then we use the balance equation to get the product moles. If, if we then are asked to get the mass or the concentration or the volume, we again use these formula to get back to where we need to be. Okay, so that's the stoichiometric calculations as a whole. Okay, written like this, it doesn't look so scary, hey? Right, so now let's just talk a little bit more about new stuff. A limiting reagent definition is that a limiting reagent is a reagent that is completely used up in a chemical reaction, whereas an excess reagent is one that is not completely used up. So the reason we ask, we talk about this is because a lot of times when you're doing a calculation, if they say that you're given, I don't know, sodium hydroxide plus excess hydrochloric acid, that means that they're telling you that there's so much hydrochloric acid, you never have to worry about using it up. So we're going to be using up the sodium hydroxide first. Okay, do you understand that? So the sodium hydroxide will be the limiting reagent because it will limit how much product you get out. Okay, the one you use up first controls how much stuff you get out. Okay, so that is the limiting reagent. So let's do an example to help you understand this. It says, when an electric current, I'm just trying to find my pen. I can't turn like this green. It's not a bad green, it's just very, doesn't work very well. When an electric current is passed through sodium chloride solution, sodium hydroxide is produced according to the following equation. So you've got sodium chloride plus water gives you chlorine plus hydrogen plus sodium hydroxide. Okay. It says, what is the maximum mass of sodium hydroxide? So this is what we want to know about sodium hydroxide that can be obtained from three kilograms of sodium chloride and two kilograms of water. Okay. So what we need to do is find out which one we're going to use at first. Okay, the ratio is two sodium chlorides to one water. That means for every two moles of sodium chloride, I need one mole of water. So the first thing we're going to do is find out how many moles of each we've been given. Okay, we've been given three kilograms of sodium hydroxide. 
So the number of moles is a mass over the molar mass or formula mass, which is going to be 3,000 because we always have to convert this to grams. So three kilograms is 3,000 grams over the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So we need to go find the molar mass of sodium, the molar mass of oxygen, I'm hoping you know, is 16, and the molar mass of hydrogen is 1. So let's go find out what the molar mass of sodium is. It's Na, and that's 23. So therefore, if we add that up, we get 3 and 6 is 9, and 1 is 10, so that's 40. So that's divided by 40. So then we need a calculator. That's not a calculator. Um, right, so we're going to go 300 divided by 4 equals 75. So we've got 75 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now let's work out how many moles of water we have, H2O. Again, the number of moles is mass of a molar mass, and again, it's going to be 2,000 over 18. How did I get 18? Well, there's two hydrogens, so the molar mass of hydrogen is one, but there's two of them. Okay, so it's times by two, which is two. The molar mass of oxygen is 16, and when you add that, you get 18. So if we get that, it's going to be two, one, two, three, divided by 18 equals 111.11, 111,11 11 moles. Okay, so let's think about this. The ratio is two moles of sodium chloride needs one mole of water, okay? So we've been given, we've been given 75 moles of sodium Sure, but did I work out sodium hydroxide? I did. <gasps> Sorry, guys. This needs to be sodium chloride. That's not 40. That is not what we want at all. And that's going to be wrong. So let's try that again, shall we? And that's not going to be 75. So let's try that again. Let's move to blue. So we now want the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.5. 35, 5, which is going to be 5, 8, 58,5. So that's 58,5. So it's not cancelled at all. And now we need a calculator. So we're going to go 3,000 divided by 58,5, which is 51,28. So that's 51,28. That's much better. So we're given 51,28 moles of sodium chloride, right? In order to use up all our sodium chloride, okay, what do we need? We need how many moles of water? We need half the amount of water. Okay, do you agree? So two moles of sodium chloride needs only half that of water. So we're going to divide that by two divide by two. So it's obviously we only need 25.64 moles, 25,64 moles of water. So do you agree we're going to use up the sodium chloride first? Because we still will have extra water. Okay, so that means that we're looking at this. We're looking at this. This is our limiting reagent, our sodium chloride is our limiting reagent because once we've used up all 51.28 moles of our sodium chloride we will still have lots of we'll have about i don't know about 85 80 moles of water left over okay so sodium chloride is a limiting reagent so that is going to affect how much sodium hydroxide we're going to get out okay how much so to make this easier to understand i'm going to erase some stuff here so we have got 51.28 moles 
Okay, that's how much we've got of the sodium chloride. Sorry for the initial confusion with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so theoretically, we've got two moles of sodium chloride makes two moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, you don't have to worry about the water, the chlorine, the hydrogen, we don't care. We're just looking at how much we use and how much we get out. So two moles of sodium chloride makes two moles of sodium hydroxide. So what is that? It's a ratio of one to one, right? So 51,28 moles of sodium chloride are going to give us 51,28 moles of sodium hydroxide, right? Awesome. So now we know we're going to get out 51,28 moles of sodium hydroxide. But they actually wanted the mass, the mass. Okay, and just for the record, the reason they're saying maximum is because we're assuming that this equation and this, this experiment runs to perfect completion and there's no issues, okay? In other words, there's no nothing else in the, in the container that has prevented this thing from all the sodium chloride to be used up, okay? So now they wanted the maximum mass. The number of moles is mass over molar mass. So we've got the number of moles. The mass is going to be 51,28 multiplied by 40. I don't know it's 40 because I worked it out earlier. Remember we did, we went NaOH and sodium was 23 and oxygen was 16 and hydrogen was one and that was 40. So let's work out what that is. So that's going to be 51.28 multiplied by 40. Mm -mm, that's not going to work. Delete, delete, delete. Multiplied by 40 equals 2051, 2, 2051, 2 grams, which is going to be 2,05 kilograms. Okay, which makes kind of sense because we are working in grams and kilograms, I mean kilograms over here. Right, so there you go. So that was a nice question. Okay, now let's talk about percentage yield. And that's kind of what I was talking about in the previous um, question when I said they've asked for the maximum mass. They asked for the maximum mass of sodium hydroxide. Yeah, yeah, they asked for the maximum mass. And the reason is that you don't necessarily get everything out that you predict, okay? Um, when you are doing an experiment, you've got a theoretical experiment like the previous one, which says that if you took two moles of sodium chloride and one mole of water, you would get out one mole of chlorine, one mole of hydrogen, and two moles of sodium hydroxide. But what they're assuming is that there are no other parts of any other chemical possibly found within that container to cause there to be a reduction in what you actually get out, okay? And that's almost never the case. There almost always is some type of thing that's preventing this reaction from being perfectly theoretically, running perfectly theoretically, okay? And that has got to do, that's where we end up with the percentage yield. So percent yield is, of a reaction basically tells us what the actual yield is divided by the theoretical yield times 100 over 1. In other words, it gives us a percent of how efficient the reaction is. The, obviously, the closer it is to 100%, uh, obviously, then the more efficient the reaction is and the more perfect that reaction is running. So let's look at an example again. So again, looking at this sodium chloride with water gives you chlorine plus hydrogen plus sodium hydroxide. Okay, we're again looking at this. Now it says the chemist carries out the above reaction using four kilograms of sodium chloride and three kilograms of water. The water, the chemist finds that they get 1.8 kilograms of sodium hydroxide. What is the percentage yield? So now we have to do exactly the same thing again. We st still again need to work out which one is our limiting reagent. So let's just first write down all our molar masses. The molar mass of Na is 23 of chlorine is 35,5, of oxygen is 16, our molar mass of hydrogen is 1, and that's all we need. Okay, now, 
Well, first thing we need to do is work out which one, what our moles are. So we're going to work out the number of moles of sodium chloride, which gives you the mass, which is 4,000, because we're going to take the four kilograms, it has to be in grams, three times about 1,000 to get 4,000, divided by the molar mass of sodium chloride, which happens to be 23 plus 35.5, which is going to be 58,5. I don't know why that's an arrow, it should be an equal sign. Uh, equals, which is what? So let's find out what the number of moles are of the sodium chloride we have. So it's 4123 divided by 58.5 which is 68.38. That's 68,38 moles. That is the number of moles of sodium chloride we have. Now let's look at the number of moles of water. That is going to be 3 kilograms, so it's 3,000, divided by 18. Okay. So again, it's 3, 1, 2, 3, divided by 18 equals 166.67. So it's 166,67 moles. So again, do you agree that the sodium chloride is the limiting agent because we need double the amount of sodium chloride for every water? So this is definitely the limiting agent. Right, so now we're going to use this to work out how much we should have got out, okay? So, okay, what am I using this? Yeah, that's fine. So, we know the ratio is two sodium chlorides gives you two sodium hydroxides. Therefore, the number of moles of NaOH is going to also be 68,38 because it's on a one-to-one -one ratio. Two to two is the same as a one-to-one. -one. So the mole, and we want the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, we've already worked out is 40. In the previous slide, we worked it out, okay? So now what we want is we want the mass. So number of moles is mass over molar mass, therefore the mass is going to be 68,38 multiplied by 40. Okay, let's have a look at what that becomes. So it's 68.38 multiplied by 40 equals 2735,2. 2735,2 grams. So that's the theoretical yield. This is the theoretical yield. Okay. The actual yield is 1.8 kilograms. So therefore, the percent yield is going to be 1,800. And the reason I've changed it to grams is just that it's going to be more accurate than me rounding this off to 2,73, right? Over 2,735,2 two times per 100 over 1. So let's get out our calculator. So we've got 1,800 divided by 2,735.2. Multiplied by 100, SD is 65,81. So my percentage yield is 65,81%. It's not too bad. Okay, it's not too bad. So basically, obviously, you prefer something in the 80s and 90s, but we are saying that the average the actual compared to the theoretical, my percentage yield is 65.81%. Okay, now let's look at some examples and I've included examples of all different types of questions so that we of all the types of stoichiometry questions from grade 10 through to grade 12, I mean grade 10 and grade 11, just so that we can get some practice on this stuff, okay? Um, these are all questions that come out of old government grade 11 exam papers, 
Okay, so it says hydrates are compounds containing water molecules loosely bound together to other compound components. So we've got a 15 gram sample of a hydrated salt, sodium sulfate dot XH2O was found to contain 7.05 grams of water. Determine the value indicated by the empirical formula. Okay, now this is water of crystallization and just a second, okay. Sorry, I just wanted to check if I went through this separately, but I don't. Okay, so let me explain how this works, okay. It says 15 gram sample of hydrated salt, which is sodium sulfate dot XH2O, was found to contain 7.05 grams of water. It says determine the value indicated by X in the empirical formula. So what we are saying is that this year is water of crystallization. So it's Na2SO4 dot XH2O. So we don't know how many moles of water are attached to the sodium sulfate, okay? We are saying that in total, in total, we have got um, X moles of water attached to the sodium sulfate. Now they say out of the 15 grams, which is the mass, they found that 7,05 grams was water okay it was water okay do you understand that it says out of the 15 grams of the hydrated 7,05 grams was water so what we need to do is find a ratio of this number of um, the molar mass of this and the molar mass of this or the formula mass of this and the formula mass of this so let's just talk about what the molar masses of everything are. The molar mass of Na is 23. The molar mass of sulfur is 32. The molar mass of oxygen is 16. And the molar mass of hydrogen is what? It's one. Okay, so what I'm saying is that out of a total 15 gram sample, 7.05 grams was water, okay? So do you agree that it actually can be broken down, and I'll show you now, that this is 15 minus 7.05 is 7.95. So what we're saying is Na2SO4 makes up 7,95 grams of the sample, and XH2O makes up 7,05 grams of the sample. Do you understand that? So now what we need to do is find out how many moles that makes. Okay, do you understand that? Um, so we can find the mole ratio. Do you see? Because we always have to work in moles. So we're going to use that to find the mole ratio. So let's do that. So we're going to go, the number of moles is equal to mass over the molar mass, which is 7,9 over the molar mass of this, which is, so the molar mass or the formula mass of Na2SO4 is going to be 2 times 23 plus 32 plus 4 times 16. Okay, so if we look at it like that, we've got 46 plus 32 plus 64, and I'm going to use my calculator. So I'm going to go 46 plus 32 plus 64 is 142. So that's 142. So if I divide this by 142, I get 7.9 uh, divided by 142 is going to give me 0, 0, 6. So that's 0, 0, 6 moles. Okay, 0.06 moles is the 7.9 grams. Okay, do you understand that? Now, if we look at this, we can say, 
I wonder if I really need to do that. So number of moles is mass over molar mass. Okay, so we know the molar mass of hydrogen, is, I mean of water is 18. So therefore the number of moles, okay, yes I have to, is going to be 7,05 divided by 18. So that is going to be, if I use my calculator, 7.05 divided by 18 equals 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4. So what we're saying is that for every 0, 0, 0,6 moles of Na2SO4, we have got 0, 0.4 moles of H2O. Now, obviously, we can't use it as that ratio. It has to be one to something, okay? So, the best way to do this is this is the same as 6 over 100. So, to get this to 1, we times this by 100 over 6. So, we need to do that as well. We're going to go 0 0.4 times by 100 over 6, which is... 0.4 times by 100 divided by 6 is going to be 6.67, so that's just 7. So therefore, this number here is 7, okay, because you round it up. Okay, so therefore, we're saying that for every 1 mole of sodium sulfate, we have got 7 moles of water of crystallization. Okay, nice question. Nice, sneaky, hard question. Okay, let's do the next question. It says vinegar is a dilute form of acetic acid. A sample of acetic acid is given the following chemical composition. Okay, so we've got carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. This is 39,9%. This is 6.7%. And this is 53,4%. And it says, determine the molecular formula if the molar mass is given as this. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is work out the empirical formula. Okay, so it's to that. So the way we do this is we assume that we've been given 100 grams. So then we've been actually, out of the 39.9%, we've actually been given 39,9 grams. The 6.7% stands for 6.7 grams, and the 53.4% stands for 53.4 grams. So we're assuming that's our mass. To find the number of moles, we do now need to divide by the molar mass. So the molar mass of carbon is 12. The molar mass of hydrogen is... Oh... Gonna disappear here any minute now. Yeah. Okay, so go back. Sorry about that. Um slideshow from beginning and then let's just go look at them. Where were we? This one. Okay, so we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We've got 39,9. Hyd uh, let's try that again. Um, 6,7 and 53,4. So like I said, the molar mass of carbon is 12. The molar mass of hydrogen is 1, and the molar mass of oxygen is 16. So then if we use our calculators, we go 39.9 divided by 12 is going to be 3,33. So this is 3,33. This is 6,7. And 53.4 divided by 16 is 3 comma 3 4 3 comma 3 4 so do you agree we can divide all of these by the smallest number and we get one two and approximately one okay so therefore the ratio is c 
H2O. That is the empirical formula. And grade, 12, grade 11s, I've now run out of time, so we will continue with this question in the next lesson, which will be on Thursday. Have a great day.